Third member of the committee, the Supreme Sheriff, to try to explain in less than 10 minutes the tectonic platform that we have to start with, uh, the geologic basis platform that we have to deal with on drainage. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do to do that is simply, I can't talk, uh, we'd be here for weeks talking about the tectonics of the Houston salt elevation. But we're, to understand this, we'll simply look at the, uh, the drainage pattern of Harris County. And I suggest something from the uh, flood control district. And we're going to parse that, decode it, and see what it's telling us about the geologic and tectonic history. Tectonism has a very large influence on drainage. So I know that you want to throw up your hands looking at this and say, oh my God, uh, this is too messy, it's crazy, but let's keep our seatbelts on and you know, don't run for the parachutes yet. So if we uh, look at this pattern, um, and I've scribbled on here, this, I'm just taking it and, and doing this on hand. This is nothing fancy. Uh, so we've got a big pond and a little pond. The little pond is off to the east, that's called Trinity Bay, in Paleo Trinity Bay, which the San Jacinto River and uh, the Trinity River are trying to fill in. And that is a tectonic feature. It's one of the more dramatic features on the Texas Gulf Coast. And, of course, to the south of us, that's, we've got the big pond, that's called the Gulf of Mexico, and that's a very significant tectonic feature. So, if we look at this, and I just sort of marked it in uh, with a pencil, you know, colored pencil on this, some interesting things I noticed, well, it looks like some of the drainage knows where the big pond is. So, we do see some south drainage here. Um, and you can barely see this, unfortunately, on this set of slides, it's all uh, the drainage uh, it, basins I've outlined, or the drainage divides I've outlined here in this red. Um, and that's one thing we would like to do. To understand what a drainage divide is, imagine drainage pattern is simply like a tree. So the upland side is where all the branches are, and then it all focuses down into the trunk. So we're not trying to divide up this into parcels of drainage areas, particularly we're just looking at stuff that jumps out at us where we can quickly outline where the drainage divide is, in other words, where the drainage is going to split and go in opposite directions. So we do that. Uh, and then I've highlighted in here the principal arterial or trunk line drainage in the Harris County area. Now, of course, when we look at this, where am I? There, I guess you can see that. Over here in the east part of the county, we have dominant south drainage. So over there, once it gets to the Trinity uh, area, the Trinity Basin area, in the Trinity Embankment, everything knows where the big pond is. But for the majority of the county, we see that the drainage is all going east. And we even have some funny things where this drainage out here in the upland area wants to go south and then abruptly turns in an eastward direction and then over here makes another 90 degree turn. Now, so, why is it? <clears throat> so, um, well, let me go back here. All right, so what we see or notice most about this is that our individual drainage divides here, that we just quickly outline a few of them. One of the things we notice is the drainage divide for our main arterial drainage system sits at the south end of their drainage area. Now, that doesn't make sense. It ought to be in the middle. We ought to 
have everything coming in from different directions into it. But instead, it all comes down to our main arterial drainage and makes a 90 degree turn. So why is that? Well, tectonics. When a geologist looks at this two-dimensional set of data, they always see this in a four-dimensional pattern. Uh, they always see this uh, in the dimension of geologic time and space. Well, what has happened here, many geologists should be able to say is, oops, the drainage basin has rotated 90 degrees. This arterial drainage we see here and here up there all has a strong eastward entrenched component to it. So that tells us in geologic past, and we're not going to argue about all the geologic past here, we're just going to look at what we've got. The drainage, the drainage pattern was strongly influenced by this tectonic feature over here, which we call the Trinity Invader. All right, this seems to be a fairly pervasive, I guess you could say a regional or pervasive feature about the vast majority of Harris County. So this means we've got some real problems where we've got peaks like here and we want to go north, which is going across regional gradient. Uh, We've got a lot of problems with this drainage that can create a weir effect. And if you were to do this and decide by looking at this where you would expect drainage problems to occur, and then pull down, and I'm going to let you do this. I'm not, you don't have to believe a word I say, you can just do this yourself. And then overlay this with your 500 year flood plate our flood maps, not the flood plain, but the actual, where did they have 500 year floods? And see if you were kind of predict predicting where there would be problems. Okay, now this, don't pay any attention to this ridiculous tile right here, right? it's just crazy. But all this is, is a gradient. This is just a simple prof gradient profile. Now, if we were to do a real gradient profile across Harris County, which is less than 30 or 35 feet for five miles, you would just see a straight line with nothing on it. So we'd have to exaggerate this vertically to show what our problems are. So, our exaggerated profile to the south with our east drainage cutting across it. And you can see what our problem is, we have good chances of spillover into the next basin. So we could just have a cascading effect down. When we have problems of kinking and somehow creating a difficulty in this eastward, main eastward drainage pattern. So this is the tectonic setting we start with. Now it only gets worse after that because we've had glacial uh, influence here. We've had glacial flooding, and it, you know, the shoreline would have been halfway up there to, uh, to uh, we would have had flooding that would have been, or the shoreline would have been maybe a quarter away, three quarters away up there to Austin. And then when we had a glacial men and all the ice melted, we would have the shoreline out at the shelf, it's a, on the slope, the slope shelf interface. So what had that done? Well, this has made this whole picture a big mess because you have re-sculpted a lot of the drainage due to the high stand, low stand of glacial periods. Then we have absolutely covered this thing with development. And that has strongly influenced and complicated the drainage system. And then, not to stop there, we've had excessive groundwater withdrawal. And 
that has created significant localized subsidence. So when we pile all that together, I hope that all of you have great sympathy with the engineers and the urban planners, the decision makers, and everybody else you want to spear for not doing the thing you thought they ought to do. You understand how messy this is, how difficult it is to get a handle on this. So we are not here to do any engineering or bureaucrat bashing because they have a job we don't want. <laughs> so, um, and of course, we're never going to be satisfied with what they do. So I'm just setting the platform here that you understand that we're not here because we live on a coastal plain and it's flat and it rains a lot. We're here because it's a heck of a lot more complicated than that. So, and, it, and our problem with this particular rotational, basement rotation is not unique. I mean, tectonics controls the fundamentals of drainage patterns, and, and we're not like the North, uh, say North Dakota, where the Red River drains into the Hudson Bay, and Hudson Bay was depressed by a huge, a huge pile of ice on it, and it has since melted, and so Hudson Bay is rebounding, and so the hinge line is there in North Dakota, so the, the Red River wants to really drain into the uh, Missouri drainage, but it's got to go north into Hudson Bay. So eventually that drainage is going to reverse. And if North Dakota had as much rain as we would do, they would be one, and a drainage for, north, for the Red River, they'd be one huge uh, pond, uh, wet and zero. So this is not unusual or unique, it's just our problem here. So I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to turn the floor back over to John Suter. Oh, there he is, good. So he can introduce all the rest of the experts here. Uh, and uh, get everybody else going. So thank you very much.